Hey everyone, spring is here and that means one thing. Your hives can go from booming to bust in just one short week. All you have to do is not be paying attention and they will swarm on you in a heartbeat during this time of the year. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you on an inspection of three of my hives. I'm going to show you my setup, what tools I have on hand, what I do during the inspection, what I look for, and other tips and tricks that make beekeeping easy on me and the bees. So let's suit up, get that smoker going, and get to inspecting some hives. But first, I want to go ahead and give you two quick tips before we ever even leave the house. First tip is to remove all jewelry off your fingers and around your wrist. This is a preventative measure in case you do get stung in the hand. The swelling won't start restricting blood flow to any of your fingers. The next tip that I have is something that I personally do and I am not recommending you do it because I am not a medical doctor. However, what I do before I ever step out in the yard is I take two preventative histamine doses. One is a histamine one blocker. This right here. Allergy tablet chlorphenamarine. I'm probably butchering that name. I'll let you. And the second is a histamine 2 blocker, which is famotidine. This is also generic for pepsid. So what happens is the chlorphenamarine is a, is a primary histamine blocker and the famotidine um, is a histamine 2 blocker, which compounds with the first one to help prevent any histamine response. Now, this isn't going to prevent anaphylaxis or anything like that, but if I were to get several bee stings all at once, it would help limit the amount of swelling that I get, and it would also buy me a little bit of time to get back to the house and take whatever measures I need to take. So if tips like this and the tips that I'm about to show you out in the bee yard are helpful to you as a beekeeper, if you would do me a quick favor, hit that like button. All right, so let's get out there and get on those hives. So a few of the things that I always bring with me to a hive inspection are an empty box to put frames in. That way I don't have to put them on the ground. Some spare frames. A little bit of wax, spare wax, in case I need to wax any frames that aren't being drawn out properly. I've brought some banana today to put on the hives just to give them a little extra nutrition. I don't have pollen patties, but they should be having plenty of pollen right now. But this, I don't know, I've just heard that it helps them, so I'm going to try it out. Some household gloves from Walmart. As you can see, they cover well past the wrist and I've yet to be stung through them. And uh, you're still able to handle the frames very, with a lot of dexterity. A light. So I can see down in the cells. A frame rest, hive tool, a light, lighter, and a lit smoker. And lots of drinking water because it's very hot. All right, so today we'll be going into the hives. I'm just going to be checking to make sure that we have a queen. That's the main objective. Just make sure that there's I either see the queen or eggs. Um, I'm also going to ch be checking for space since we are in a honey flow and adding space if need be. But those are the two main things, checking for space and checking for a queen. That's it. You'll notice I have two inch foam insulating board on top. This helps with uh, Florida summer heat.
You'll also note that I have a table and a chair with me. See, they're drawing out some fresh white wax on the inner cover. That probably means they need some space. Whenever I see bur bur wax like that, I just scrape it off, crumple it up. It needs to be melted down later. So I just added this top by this top super the other day, last week. They're already starting to draw it out, but doesn't look like it's anywhere near yeah they're just now starting to draw out the center frames a little bit Putting a little bit of nectar up in that one. But it looks like they've got at least a week on this top super. You'll see here we have eight frames of bees on this third honey super nectar and capped honey. Just place that in the little easy nook that I brought out for that purpose. capped honey and nectar. Here you have some brood. And 
honey and cap connector. Almost a solid frame of cap honey there. Nice solid wall of brood and brood and in the in the hatched out the spots I actually see um, some being filled with larva and some being filled with nectar. Another solid frame of brood. That means these bees are about to be booming. So, looking for eggs, I've seen some larvae. I've seen lots of brood, but now I'm looking for eggs just to make sure I've had a queen in the past few days. Lots of brood. There's some larva, and I'm seeing over here on over here on this side there's some very young larva and possibly eggs And that's a nectar frame. So with this hive, I've seen all stages of from egg to capped brood so i know i'm probably queen right pretty good not positive if they may be about to swarm but i'm not gonna check on that today because i've got to check a couple other hives what i am going to do is i'm going to bring one of these frames of capped brood up into this top honey super and drop one of the undrawn frames in its place. This will not only encourage them to draw out top super but it also will give a sense of space matter of fact I'm going to do a couple frames like that I'm going to checkerboard it
Oh. One got me there. What happens when you get a little lax on the smoking? Put these two frames back in. Get rid of this burr comb. Now I'm going to push all the frames tight against one side to get all the space. And then I've got all this space right here. I'm going to equalize it out. Put this honey super back on. I always put it on caddy corner like that and then just slide it. You're still going to kill some bees, but you don't mash near as many. Make sure the box is good and square. We don't get any. Then I'm going to take, this is a good strong hive, so I'm going to take about half a banana. And I cut it into quarters so that it's easy to get to. Put it right there. And I learned this from Cayman Reynolds. I just used some Reflectix. Put it right on top. This helps keep the hive temperature inside somewhat stable. And it also keeps the summer heat that's beating down on the roof of these hives. It keeps it out of the hive. Since I've got bananas on here, I'm going to put the inner cover, which will give them a little bit of space for those bananas so it doesn't smash it. And then the Reflectix. You'll notice the notch can allow some of this summer heat. As you can tell, I don't know if you see it, but I'm sweating. So it's pretty hot here in Florida already. It's going to be in the 90s today. Um, so. Some bees left on the top. I'm going to take this. That gets them nice and mad. And then whenever I put the top cover on, I push it all the way forward. That way it gives a gap for that slot in the inner cover to allow ventilation.
All right, so hive one checked. Give the old puffer, give the old smoker a few puffs to make sure it stays going. Then we're on to the next one. Again, just two inch foam, just put right on top just to break the sun. And uh, also, I like to put a little chair right here. That way I can take a break because I've got a bad back. <clears throat> Drink me some water. Gotta make sure I don't mess up my mic. Okay. Just drink it right through the veil. That's how beekeepers do it. <clears throat> but, so I keep this chair and this table here with me at all times because the table prevents me from having to bend over and put stuff on the ground then pick it back up it's also a handy location to keep all your tools organized so you're not like where did i leave this where did i put that and also this chair so i can take a break i've got <clears throat> i've got two bulging discs and a broke vertebrae actually a couple broke vertebrae in my back um that make standing or even walking for extended durations pretty difficult but with this chair so you can imagine standing over a hive is pretty difficult for me so i bring this chair out here i sit down try and stay cool and hydrated rest in between um hives so that i can get all my work done but without throwing my back out also bring this like an easy nook out to the yard to one place the edge frame in so that I don't have to lay it on dirt because inevitably every time I lay a frame on the dirt I end up kicking it with my foot and then they end up stinging me all on the ankles but this allows me to put it keep the frame safe just in case the queen is on there and I didn't miss her on the edge frame um, but it also allows me to take out up to five frames and put them in there to make, like if I needed to lift this box off and it was just slap full of honey, I could take five of the frames out, put them in there, and the box would be half as heavy. Or if I wanted to, I could take an empty box, a, a eight or a 10 frame honey super, and instead of this, put the, all the frames in it and then move it over frame by frame. That way I've moved this top honey super without actually even having to lift anything more than one frame. So that's how you can work around a bad back. All the time people talk about beekeeping is a lot of heavy lifting. Well, for a person like me, I can't do heavy lifting. So I've had to figure out ways around it. Um, and this is one of them. Just frame by frame. Now, it does take a little bit longer and it's a little more time, you know, it's more time consuming and a little bit more labor intensive, but um, when you have a disability, sometimes that's just how it is. All right, let's move on to the next hive. So this hive, <coughs> um, one deep and one medium, eight frame configuration. I choose eight frame configuration on most of my stuff. Um, including this one and this one um, slider and then also on this one you'll notice it's all mediums I try and do all mediums whenever I can um, so that the boxes are lighter themselves however sometimes I get uh, a good deal on a deep or it's just what I happen to have on hand so I I do have some deeps but I try and standardize all my equipment to eight mediums eight frame medium boxes. 
So this hive right here is from a, a split and it's actually a split from that resource nook that I have that's four deeps tall. Um, this, this hive right here is just absolutely booming. Um, I don't know if it's just a great queen or if bees just really like nooks, the five frame configuration. I've heard a lot of talk that bees just really like the narrow, tall, sort of like a tree, I guess. Um, so I may in the future end up going to all nooks and just see how that does. But this anyway, this is a split from there and I'm trying to see if they've actually made a queen or not. So I'm gonna look for evidence of a queen or a, a, a merged queen cell um, to see if I either need to... A few weeks ago, I put a frame of eggs in here. So at this point, I think we're at day 20 something. Um, so there definitely should be either an emerge queen or or eggs. So let's just hope we see some eggs. If not, I'll just buy me a queen cell, put it in here. The reason why I've been uh, thinking about putting a queen cell instead of a mated queen is Sweet Stingers, the channel Sweet Stingers. I highly suggest you check them out. Um, he actually recommends queen cells or virgin queens. Um, there's a lot of benefits to them because you get the local genetics. So let's see how, see if we see any queen here. Give the old smoker a puff. Uh, let's see, two, three, ten, several small hive beetle. Hold on, I gotta, I'll be right back, got a solution for that. All right, so the solution I have for that is a little car back and peppermints. Just great value peppermints. Gonna throw a couple in there, supposedly that helps. And I'm also going to only give them a little bit of banana because if they've already got a small hive beetle problem, I don't want to give them any breeding ground for the small hive beetle. That's two, three small hive beetles that I got there. I don't see any more small hive beetles. Last week it was a lot of small hive beetles. So hopefully what I've done has helped them out. What I'll do whenever I'm done inspecting, I'll take that container and dump it out in some soapy water and kill those small hive beetles. I think I learned that tip off Bruce's bees. I'm not exactly sure so this honey super i added on there just last week so i want to see how they're 
doing with it because the bottom box was getting crowded with syrup. Empty frame. Small hive beetle. See if I can get them. Empty frame. Give these guys some smoke. Getting a little riley. They're starting to draw the frames out, but not much. They're working on that one. So, looks like I'll probably check back with these guys in a week to see how they're doing on that super. Space them out evenly. Take the slid, put it on my table. Stay hydrated, folks. Now, this honey super is pretty light because it's pretty much empty, but if it were full, I would just take it frame by frame and put it over there into an empty honey super. So you see here we've got seven frames and then an in-frame feeder. It's empty. I haven't put any feed in it for a while. Um, because we're in the middle of a honey flow, so got some sticks down in there to keep them from drowning. So now let's just see if we see some eggs or any evidence of an emerged queen. They are drawing out some burr comb right there. That's a heavy frame right there. Woo. Solid honey right there. And that's about to be capped. Bring my chair over here. So I can sit down while I do this because old back's starting to hurt. Mm -hmm. 
That is a you can see here this is was the brood nest and they're filling it up with honey. There's some queen cups there. They look empty. Some drone brood, but I'm not seeing any other brood. Some pollen. see some completely empty cells I don't see any eggs or larva young larva some capped brood Lots of pollen. I don't know if you can capped honey. Lots of pollen right there. And then there's some burr comb that I'm gonna handle right now. That way it doesn't just continue to be a problem. Lots of pollen. capped honey again lots of fur comb down here They're starting to get a little aggravated with me, so I'm about to give them some smoke. Pretty sure this is a queenless hive. 
I'm going to have to figure out what to do with them. I'll probably get a, a queen cell. I could take a, a frame of eggs and have them make their own, but I want to get a little bit of a jump. It could also be why they're not drawing out that medium frame because they don't have a queen. So, a lot of times the queen is the one that dictates whether they have the urge to produce. comb or not I don't know if you can hear them but they're also pretty loud which makes me believe that they may be queenless so since I know all I got to know about this hive right here I'm just going to go ahead and close them up they got plenty of food and pollen so once they do have a queen, they shouldn't have any problems raising the larva. So I don't need to feed them. I may just take this feeder out altogether. Give them more room. I'm going to place it. They look, still look pretty strong. And I only saw the few small hive beetles, so I am going to place some bananas on there just to give them some added nutrition. You can tell that the the banana does mimic their their alert pheromone because they definitely get stirred up but they're not stinging so that's kind of a myth that causes them to sting it does get their attention and you'll see them start eating it and here within I don't know two or three days they'll be completely empty you might find you might still see the um, peel but that's about it all right I'm gonna close them up and we just need to find a queen for this one it's always something that's the thing with beekeeping it's always something All right, hive number two. One of the other things you'll notice that I, I don't know if you can see it, but 
if you look right here, one of the other things that I do in Florida to stay from being overheated is a little neck fan. I don't know if you can hear that, but just blows air up from around your neck up onto your face. I don't have it on during the videos because loud, but that's another way that you stay cool in Florida while you're doing this is you gotta you gotta stay hydrated and you gotta stay cool. So now we're about to Now we're about to go into this other hive here. Just make sure there's no issues going on there. Might need to refresh my smoker. Just one second, let me go get some fuel. Alright, so one of the things that I use is just some of this packing paper that I get in every Amazon box that I order and every Amazon box that my wife orders. And that's a lot. I keep a, a brick on the little table here. Um, that way I have something to set this smoker on because that wasn't very smart, was it? It gets very hot, very hot. And I don't want it burning up my table. So I put a little brick there. That way I got a convenient place to... Then I just take some of this packing paper depending on how long i'm going to be on the hive I, sometimes i just use this because it gives me quite a bit of time but if i'm going to be in any length of time i actually use smoker pellets and as you can see get that going Get it to where it flames up. And then I'll just take some smoker pellets and load it on top there. put our gloves on our handy dandy Walmart dishwasher gloves wow don't leave those out in the sun folks they get hot all right now this one Move the camera over a little bit. So this hive is a deep 10 frame configuration with 
two mediums on it. Now, probably going to leave the deep and the medium as their brood box, and then anything above that I'm going to use for me. Um, but we'll see how I added this uh, medium a week or two ago. We'll see how they're doing on drawing it out. Also going to be checking for space, so check and see if they've drawn this out. And check to see if I see any queen, queen evidence of the queen, eggs, etc. Lift up, give them a little puff. Get my old vacuum cleaner ready just in case. Oh, there it comes. Okay, small high beetle. Small high beetle. Check on here and make sure there's no small hive beetle. Another thing you should do whenever you're doing your hives is just, you know, tidy it up a little bit. You see burr comb on the top or smash bees. All right, let's see how this. Uh, inside of that outer one is barely drawn, but they're putting some nectar in it. About 50% drawn with some nectar. About 75% drawn there. Lots of nectar. Now you see, there's almost nothing drawn on that one. And they're skipping this area over here. So what I'm going to do, make sure there's no queen on it. And then I'm going to knock all the bees off. And I'm going to take some of this wax that I've got. And add to it. And hopefully. Ooh, that wax is soft now. I'm sitting out in that heat. Take a larger block 
and just rub it on there. I don't know if you can see that, but again they're drawing this half but not that half of the frame for some reason same on both sides so give them a little incentive to draw it now you can see fresh wax right there goes on pretty easy because that florida summer or florida spring i guess sun is just heating this up got some getting a little riley so again stay hydrated Again, they're not touching that area of the frame for some reason. Full of nectar. About 95% drawn. Full of nectar. Ninety-five whip. They're working on that side just a little bit. Gonna add some. Fresh beeswax. Get them to hopefully draw the areas that they haven't started on yet. Every little bit you add is less they've got to produce. Less they've got to produce means less honey they've got to consume to produce it. Because in order to produce wax, they've got to consume honey or nectar oops, oops smashed one sorry baby Let's see if I can Get them off there so I don't accidentally smash another one. And this wax that I've got is from a local beekeeper. You don't want, not besmirching anybody on Amazon, but you don't want to buy your wax from just anybody because. A lot of wax, especially on the internet, is mixed with paraffin because beeswax is expensive and it's hard to get. So they sell you beeswax mixed with paraffin 
and then the bees won't touch it. So go to a local beekeeper until you've got enough flax of your own and buy something that you know is 100% beeswax. If it's cheap, probably means it's not the real deal. All right, put these frames back in, then we'll go into the Again, press all the frames up against one side to get all the gaps between because you don't want them getting filled up with, even if there's just a little bit of space in between those frames, the bees will put propolis in them and then it'll get to where you can't get your frames together anymore. Got to put the lid on the table. So just got to set it sideways. See here, we've got good solid 10 frames of bees covering not only the in between but on top. They really like it when you wave your hand over them like that, get them a little riled up. So, I'm going to just give them a puff of smoke, settle them down. Fill these guys down a little bit. I'm going to try doing an unedited version. I typically edit my videos quite a bit, but the other day I watched a video um, of someone just going through their hive pretty much unedited, and I kind of enjoyed it because it was. It was almost like doing a hive inspection, but not being there. So let me know what y'all think about the unedited version or if I should cut it out or how you think I should do it. Um, I'm taught so much now they're back up looking at me. So I want to get them off this frame as much as possible so I can have space to pull. I can tell right now this one is going to be heavy with honey. Yep, capped honey. I need to extract that. Capped honey. Mostly capped honey and some nectar. Thank you. 
It's like where some brood hatched out. And now they're back filling it with honey. Grown comb. It looks like a little bit of cat brood. There's some drone comb right there. And I don't see any mites on them. Whew. Time to sit down and take a break. <clears throat> It's like capped honey and some grown comb there at the very bottom. One thing you can do if you notice them getting a little aggravated with you inspecting their hive, mm -hmm. you can take this table and this chair and move it further away from the hive and then take your frame. Oop, sorry. Mm -hmm. Take your frame and mm -hmm. walk about 10 feet away from the hive. And then you don't have to worry about guard bees that are right over here eyeballing you hard More capped honey and nectar. Getting a little aggravated with me and I haven't seen any brood yet. It's making me a little worried that this hive might be queenless. Thank you. 
can see some grown comb here. I don't see any mites on it. Just wanting to find some brood. Grown cone. Spilled some honey, it looks like. Yeah. All right, they're starting to get aggravated. All right, folks, there are times when you can keep bees in Florida with just a putting a veil. And there's other times when you got to go all out. Full beekeeper outfit. I hate to do it because it's hot as hell, but already got a couple stings so I'm not a macho man I like to make sure I don't get overly exposed also when you're wearing a fence and veil like this make sure you wear a cap it helps keep it off your face so we're gonna finish this hive up and uh, hopefully they're not queenless <laughs> Gonna go ahead and get my smoker going good. Ooh, they're mad. Way, let them settle down a little. It never hurts to give them a few minutes, walk away, make sure your smoker's got plenty of fuel in it. They are mad at me. And this hive is absolutely booming. Some young larvae. 
Some cat. Lots of cat brood. Wondering if maybe they formed. Uh, there's some eggs. Yep, there's definitely eggs. So with that, I'm going to leave this ornery hive alone. Not sure why they're so mad. They definitely are. Try and put everything back together without mashing. And you're putting these frames back together. Yes, they are telling me in no uncertain terms, let's put this hive back together. Take this mostly full uh, super, I think, and place that it on top. And take this partially gone one. These frames back the way they were.
Sometimes they get protective when they got honey the way they do. So maybe that's what the deal is. Them out after you mash them all one direction. Take these. That these from the box. Hopefully. See them line up on that banana. Kind of smoke them off this edge. Try not to kill them as much as possible, even though they like kamikaze in on me especially this hive it seems like I do place this on top just to keep the sun off of them. Okay, folks, so just got done inspecting three hives. I hope you enjoy um, 
watching the unedited versions, only going to cut out blank space where I was off camera, one of which I was running from a bunch of mad bees. Um, but I'm going to leave it unedited. That way you just get to watch a hive inspection, including my mistakes, stuff like that. Um, remember this time of year, you're looking for space. You're looking for evidence that a queen is there, not necessarily the queen. So you're looking for eggs or very, very young larvae, which tells you the queen's been there within the past few days. Um, you're also looking for swarm cells. You can check for swarm cells pretty easy without going through every single frame just by tipping the box up and looking along the bottom. Uh, that's not 100% guaranteed, but um, you'll spot them if, if they're there. Um, this time of the year, I just like to get in and get out because it's hot. As you saw, that one hive was mattered all get out and uh, didn't appreciate me being in there. So if you liked any of the tips and tricks that I taught you, like, for example, about the table, or the bee vacuum, or the dishwashing gloves. I actually published a book. It's on Amazon, but I offer it for free through my website. It's a PDF download, and it's got tips and tricks, and it's designed to make beekeeping as easy and straightforward as possible for everyone, especially beekeepers with a disability, such as myself, with a, a injured back or anything like that so if you're interested in getting that book i'll have a link to it in the description below I'll also have a link to uh, a lot of the products that i enjoy using um, for example the vacuum the, the hive tool um, the gloves all that stuff will be linked in the description of the video if you would um, do me a favor uh, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of videos, a lot of reviews on products. I plan on doing some how-tos coming up here shortly. Um, so if videos like this help you, help me out by uh, liking, subscribing, sharing my videos with your friends. and. Uh, also, in the comments below, let me know what you thought about the unedited version. All my previous videos before have pretty much been very edited. I cut out all the dead space. I, I add graphics. I do all kinds of fancy stuff. Um, takes a lot of time, but I just want to... Uh, I saw someone else. Matter of fact, I think it was Be Smart um, channel. Uh, they did a video where they just were going through hives unedited, and I actually enjoyed just sitting there watching them chit-chat and go through the bees. Um, David Burns also pretty much did that, sat through and just got to watch an hour worth of hive inspection. And I, I figured if I enjoy it, maybe someone else will enjoy it. And, um, I hope you enjoyed watching me go through the bees. Hope you got a little snicker out of watching me uh, get chased off from the hive and actually have to put on some protective gear. Um, in Florida, you try and do inspections as much as you can with as little protective gear as possible, but sometimes they force your hand and you should always have it ready. You should always have that smoker ready. You should always have. A, a full suit ready to get in because sometimes they'll make you. Um, but in, if you like this video, check out some of my other videos. They're going to be, I think, right over here in this area. Um, thank you very much.